welcome back to my channel. So today we're talking all about how to get an A in college. When I was a freshman, I was definitely not an A student. I think my mindset was off, uh, my study habits were not there, and I was really struggling with school. I was studying as a biological science major and I thought I wanted to go pre-med, so I was really struggling and grades were not really as high as I wanted them to be. Looking back now, I realized a couple of the mistakes that I made, so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes, and now my study habits have completely turned around. I know what it takes to get an A, and that is why I feel like I want to pass on what I've learned to you guys so you can avoid all of the mistakes that I made and maybe just improve by a little bit your study habits for the next school year. So I really hope you find this video helpful, and let's get started. Tip number one, everything starts before lecture even begins, so be sure to get enough sleep. I can't stress it enough. People in college do not get enough sleep. We typically need about seven to eight hours to fully function, and I know a lot of people like to pull all-nighters, but if you do that, you're just not as prepared for class, and you're not ready to learn as much as you could. Tip number two, have the mindset of an A plus student. If you want to get an A, you must let go of all of your negative thoughts. When I was a freshman, I when I struggled, I just kind of ignored it. And I thought, if I don't get it, the professor's dumb. He doesn't know how to teach. I'm going to do well, okay, you know, even if I don't get it, whatever. Just forget about it, uh, I'm not gonna study. You know, if these are some of the things that you're thinking and they're not very positive, it might not lead you to the grade that you want. So a couple tips for you, if you're feeling very negative, is to just let it go. Because if you want a, you can do it. You just need to change your mindset. Uh, on the first day of class, sit near the front. Don't sit near the back because people in the back tend to kind of fool around, like to text, pass notes. If you sit in the front, you're more than likely to pay attention, be surrounded by people who want to succeed just as much as you do. And that is what I did and I found a lot of people that I could study with that way by sitting in the front. And the professor will see you and know that you come to class and I'm sure that will help you in the long run. Do not ever miss lecture for any reason except maybe if you're sick. But just try your best not to miss lecture because you will probably fall behind and it's really hard to honestly stay at home and catch up on all the reading before the next class. So just try to be on time. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is, oh, just sleeping in, deciding, oh, I don't really need to go. I hate that professor. I, I'm just not gonna go. So try your best not to miss lecture. Prepare yourself for class the night before. Read the textbook. So what I mean by that is if you're assigned reading for that day, like on your syllabus, just try to skim through the chapter. You don't have to read it completely. Maybe 30 minutes before you sleep, that's your best studying time. Just go through the chapter, read the bold headings, look at the bold terms, and then by the time you go to lecture the next day, um, when the professor talks about something, it'll just trigger something in your memory, and it'll just register that much better, and you'll remember it better. Don't fall behind in your reading. I know a lot of people decide, oh, I'm just gonna learn and lecture. That's a really big mistake. Half of the learning should be on your own and half of it should be from your professor and what they tell you you need to know. So it's been proven that if you're a B plus student and you wanna be an A student, study with someone else. Find someone who is on the same level as you are, who won't distract you. That way you can bounce ideas off of each other, questions or anything like that. If you're studying chemistry, which is quite a difficult subject in my opinion, 
Um, just find two to three people that you can go over problems with and you can work on it together and then compare your answers. That way you have someone to bounce off your ideas with and then by the time your midterms or finals roll around, you have someone you can rely on to study with. And if you don't get something, you can ask them for help. You know the topic better than your partner does, explain it to them because you can learn a lot by explaining to them the processes and when they ask you questions and you can explain it, then you know you for sure have learned the material. But if you don't know it, maybe they can explain it to you. And if you both don't get it, go to your professor, ask for help. I cannot stress it enough, read it, buy it, don't skimp out on it, don't be cheap, borrow it from the library if you need to, just make sure you have the copy of the textbook and you open it up. Don't let it accumulate dust in the corner on your desk, just open it up and read it because I feel like you learn so much more when you open up your textbook and you actively try to learn the material in addition to what your professor is trying to teach you in class. You'll be so surprised because sometimes the material that they teach you in class is right out of the textbook and maybe it's repetitive but it'll help you learn it in the long run and it'll help you for the test. Sometimes professors even like to test out of the textbook like some of the multiple choice questions at the end of the textbook they'll just pull it out and put it on your test and if they do that you're already prepared because you've seen it before so you might get bonus points that way so be sure to read your textbook and buy it Stay on top of your assignments. When I was a freshman, I was horrible at remembering what was due next. So what I did was I got a calendar and I put down all the dates of my homework assignments and midterms. And if, for example, I have something due on the 7th, I'm not gonna go out on a party or do something crazy the day before. I'm going to work on it maybe the, a couple days before so I don't procrastinate and wait till the last minute to do it and everything just piles up. Keeping a planner is also very, very helpful too because you can overview and write down all of your assignments all at once and then you can see what's due next, when your tests are coming up, it's just really helpful. Figure out what type of learner you are. So there's three different types. You could be a visual learner, you could be a kinetic learner, which is just learning through watching other people do it and actually doing it yourself, or you could listen and learn that way. So for me personally, I'm a very big visual learner. If your professor writes something on the board or repeats themselves over and over again about a certain thing, I'm 100% positive it's going to be on the test. And I know a lot of professors won't waste their time saying, um, glycolysis, glycolysis, glycolysis. If they say it over and over, I'm sure it's on the test. I know that a lot of people don't go to lecture because they don't like their professor. So be sure before you even sign up for the class that you go on ratemyprofessor.com or another website like ratemyteacher.com and just search the professor that you're interested in signing up for and maybe they're a really awful professor and you know you can avoid that person by choosing someone else and maybe choose someone that really matches your learning style. So for example, if you hate lectures that just talk on and on and don't add anything to the material that's on the slide, then don't choose that professor. If on day one you know that's the only professor that you can have for that entire quarter or semester, learn to just ignore the fact that you don't like them and still try to learn the material because you, in the end, you have to learn it if you want to graduate. Ask questions. When, when you're in lecture, raise your hand. Don't be afraid. If you don't understand something, just say, hey professor, what do you mean by that? Repeat. Can you repeat yourself? And um, can you clarify what you just said? You know, sometimes when you have questions, more than likely other people have the same questions too, so don't be afraid. If 
you're struggling in school, get help. Ask for someone to tutor you. I know that a lot of schools offer some sort of tutoring program for difficult classes. Like when I first started chemistry my freshman year, I kind of struggled. I just had so such a hard time wrapping my head around certain formulas, certain processes, so I sought out a tutor and I'm really glad that I did because she had some of the Old Test material and she gave me some tips and tricks on you know, how to succeed in that class. So I'm so happy that I found her and found that tutor. So get help if you need it. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also leave in the comments down below and you know, how, what do you do to achieve the grade that you want and what can you do differently if you're not getting an A? And was there something in this video that you could relate to? Be sure to watch my previous video which is 10 mistakes that I made as a freshman video and I'll link that down below in the description bar for you guys. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! And I know everyone wants to get good grades, and if you don't, what's wrong with you? No, I'm just kidding.